That's why it's got to be taken serious. All of eternity for you is determined by what you do here. Whether you accept Christ as your Savior or not. All of eternity. You get saved. You know? I'm going to live for Christ. I'm not going to live for Christ. Well, it's going to determine a lot in your eternity. Okay, I'm going to live for Christ, but I'm only going to do so much. You know? All of that figures in to how you're going to spend eternity. You know, again, I, I, I've, I've said this many times before, and I mean it with all my heart. I'm not trying to do what I'm doing because I'm looking for crowns. I'm not looking for rewards. I'm not looking for all those things. Will I get some? Probably. Certainly not as far as I'm concerned, out of any deserving, but because of the graciousness of God. You know, he looks for opportunities to mark you up. Oh, here's one. Yep, yep, yep. He looks for that. He wants to give these things to you. He wants to bless you with them. Okay? But that, frankly, is future. People are looking so often in this life for what's only going to come along in the next. Sorry, the mansions are yet to come. Okay? The ease, the rest, all that, that's, that's all to come. I know you're all are sick of hearing me say it. We're in a war. We're in a battle. War stinks. It's miserable. It's a lousy place to be. It's certainly no fun. Nobody wants to be there. I guarantee. I know I don't. <laughs> but that's reality of where we are. And there's a purpose and reason. We've got to remember to try to think about things the way God thinks. Not always easy to do. But that's why you've got this. That lets you know how God thinks. Obviously today I was thinking a lot about Job. <laughs> I was commiserating a lot with Job earlier today. But then you got to remember what was going on with Job and Job's race. What was God doing with Job? I mean, look at how he described him to the devil. Man, up this upright man who was shoe with evil. Nobody like him on all the earth. That's a pretty high rating. Boy, didn't God put the fire to him? You know, and Job's like, why are you doing this to me? So God says, I'm refining you. I'm perfecting you. I'm making, I'm getting you ready for something that you aren't and that you can't be right now. The race is tiring. Okay? Like I say, I'm no different. sense I'm kind of glad that <laughs> I lost it this morning. Behaved like a whiny baby. Just simply the fact again, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing anything special, folks. I'm not. I don't know why God said, hey, I'm, I want you to be a, a pastor. Really? <laughs> Who are you talking to? You know, it's kind of like Moses. <laughs> and I'm not comparing myself to Moses by any stretch. But it's the simple fact that just because this is my place in the body of Jesus Christ, and I thank you, Lord, for it, it doesn't make me any more important than any one of you. 
And it doesn't make me any more important than your place in the body. What I want to urge you to do is fulfill your place in the body. That's all I'm doing here tonight. This is my place. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what God expects of me. Like I said, I wanted to quit, <laughs> but I know better than to quit. Well, once I got done having my temper tantrum, <laughs> and put my big boy pants back on, I said, okay, Lord. Not, I'm not above having trials and tribulations just like anybody else. Yeah, I'm frustrated. Yeah, I got a lot on my plate. Got a lot of things going on right now. I'm trying to cover a lot of territory. But it wouldn't be there if there wasn't a purpose and a reason. Part of it was for me. God saying, you're having a hard time running with that weight you're dragging there, boy. Maybe you ought to put that thing down. Right there. <laughs> trying to be a perfectionist. Trying to do everything and take care of everything and think that it all rests on you. Well, no, it don't. No, it don't. God, take me out of here right now. He'd find somebody else to. The world's not going to fall apart if I don't take care of it all. It's a hard lesson to learn. We all have those things that we have to deal with. That baggage, those weights, things that are hindering us, keeping us from running the race. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Heavenly Father, Oh Lord, thank you. Thank you for being smarter than me knowing what I needed in my life. Show me a problem in my life that I need to take care of. Sometimes we think too much of ourselves. We think everything revolves around us and what we do, and that's just not the case. Lord, none of us enjoy having trials and troubles and tribulations come into our lives. Lord, you've had me preaching on that, Lord, for several weeks now and probably will for several months to come on our Sunday evenings. But they're going to come. How we deal with them. How we deal with them is what's important. We need to trust you. We need to trust you. You know what's best for us. Well, we've got a race to run. And we can't allow ourselves to be distracted or to be hindered or to have something get in our way. We have to press, push, drive towards the finish line. And whether it come to the death of this no good mortal body, or we be blessed with the incredible privilege of going up at the rapture, that's when the race ends. Until then, we need to run. And so I pray that you help us to run. And ask for this in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have number one hundred.